So this morning we're working on uh, putting the cleaner back together. We decided to change the U-joint and the clean grain auger in the uh, grain tank. And this U-joint was uh, pretty bad. So uh, what we discovered was this U-joint is the same as what, a Polaris 500? Polaris 500 four-wheeler rear, uh, rear shaft, I guess. Yeah, it's the same U-joint as a Polaris 500 four-wheeler the rear shaft in that four-wheeler so it's the prop shaft so uh napa number is a 1501 or a nipco number is a 0 600 or so, a moog uh, 338 or a moog 338 so luckily napa didn't have this neither did o'reilly's so luckily in Couts, indiana there's a car quest they have two in stock it, with the moog number so uh, we're going to go pick that up so we can put the old gleaner back together and we can pick some corn this afternoon. So it uh, worked out pretty good. Um, good thing we uh, we done some research on uh, Google and found out that these were for a Polaris four-wheeler also because that really helped us out. So uh, we're going to go get this and then we're going to head back to the shop and see if we can get it put together. Everything's ready to go back together. We got all our plates made to hold the bearings and uh, uh, let's see what else did we do. Fixed a few other cracks that we found. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're ready to go back together. So we just need parts. We got the U-joint in our hands. Now we're gonna head over to Bain Welker Equipment and Lacrosse. Case IH dealer, and we're going to get some uh, skid plates for the two 1063 heads that go under the row dividers. And uh, we're going to harass Eric Point, our favorite salesman, for a while and uh, see if we can't shake him down for some demos on equipment. Uh, he's supposed to be getting me some, but uh, you know, I'm I'm afraid we need to be in the 5,000 acre club to be taken serious, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll, we're going to go see what we can get pride out of him today. Hopefully he's in the office, not just out running around like he usually does. But, you know, he's a good salesman, so he's out trying to drum up business. It must be hard to sell some of that red stuff sometimes, you know. So, but, uh, so we're going to maybe grab a few other things. We'll see if they got anything that excites us there, uh, like some tools or Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get some more mule wipes or some old Rusty's penetrating oil. We've been using that stuff like crazy lately on our uh, restoration projects. We used a whole can on a steering clutch on the old MC. And actually, it helped us get it apart. I, I really think that it made a difference getting that old Rusty clutch apart. So the old Rusty's penetrating oil is some pretty good stuff. So uh, we're going to stop and see if we can find Eric see what he's doing. Maybe we can con him into helping us fix the cleaner. I know how bad he hates the cleaner. So, it's like, you need to get rid of that silver one and get a red one. Well, if you'd ever bring me one to demo, we might just do that. So, anyways, we'll take some video when we get there. Well, let's see what they got on the lot today. Ooh, 420 crod track. Oh, look, that's not supposed to be here, Eric. Why is that here? That's the wrong color. Thought you didn't have John Deere's on your lot. Okay, let's go in and get some parts. I don't see Eric's truck, so he's... Oh, look at that. Look at that bat wing. I think we need to take that home. That Mom could chop corn stalks with that. Mm -hmm. She would like that. Maybe we can talk her into letting us get one. Okay, let's go get parts. So we got our parts and we're just doing our once a week drive around to the lot. I think this combine, right, 7250 might be fairly brand new maybe. Yeah, I think so. It's a pretty combine. I'd like to have a 2377. That'd be a nice replacement for the 1660. Plenty of corn heads sitting here, that's for sure. Might have to get the old gleaner a new poly head or a newer poly head. Nice 1020. Well, we got uh, three out of the six skid shoes we needed. 
enough to do one head that uh, needs them replaced. So uh, we're going to head back to the shop now and uh, get the gleaner put back together. We are back at the shop now. Uh, we got Dad picking corn. So uh, one machine's at least running. So now we're back. We're going to get the gleaner put back together. This is the uh, U-joint that we have to replace. Dad's strength's going to get it out of the box. But uh, we're going to replace this U-joint. And then uh, we're going get to get the clean grain auger put back up in the grain tank. And then I can get it bolted back in where it goes. We get the bearings on it. And then the bearing is actually going to hold my plate in place. This is a new plate that we made. It's going to hold this in place and kind of give us an idea where it needs to sit exactly. And then I'll weld all the way around this. This is actually a thicker a thicker steel than what the hopper is actually made out of so it uh, should cure our problem and then uh, I also came up here and where all this was broke out on the front wall I actually put a piece of quarter inch strap on the front side of this bolted it back in tightened it up everything drawed up back straight so what I'm gonna do is when I weld this in I'm a pull my welder leads in the hopper and I'm going to get in I'm going to weld around that quarter inch strap in there it's about two inches wide so that'll really brace all this up right here so I took the uh, die grinder cleaned all the galvanized off and uh, now I'll be able to weld that with no problem and it'll cure the problem so we're gonna get all this stuff put together and uh Hopefully go pick some corn this afternoon. So, got some good corn out there. Just need to get it out of the field. So we adjusted the stripper plates on Dad's combine this morning because it was kind of cutting off the tops of the stalks pretty bad and taking them through and cutting some stalks off. So, got them widened out. We really didn't think we were going to have that nice of corn stalks this year, but the corn is surprisingly better than we thought so we're pretty happy so we're gonna get this u-joint put in it's a tiny u-joint it's easy to work with it's not a big one we're just gonna take a c-clamp and uh, draw it right in there look at that fantastic and this is oh no hmm. I hate it when they pop because it always makes me think a needle falls in so, but this is a greasable U-joint now, so uh, we can get in there and grease it. Maybe it'll last quite a while longer. They actually offer a needleless or bearingless U-joint for this also, but uh, we just got the normal needle bearing one. So, okay, we're gonna get this back together. <clears throat> well, we got it all put back together. Um, we had to put a different grease fitting in because the one that they sent with us wasn't, it wouldn't fit in there. Yeah, it didn't clear the yoke. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just get one of them uh, ends. Yeah, or I get one of the ends for the grease gun that's 90 degree that shoves over there sideways. It'll fit in there to grease that. So, But that don't need to be greased that often. So the original one wasn't even greasable. So now we're going to get this back up in the grain tank and get it put back together. Well, we're in the grain tank. We got the uh, clean grain auger all back in. Got it all bolted up. We're gonna bolt all the bearings in and we're gonna hold this tight. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, no, I thought I forgot something. But <laughs> we're gonna bolt everything back in. And I'm gonna weld all this stuff up so everything will hold stuff square. And then I gotta weld this strap up here. And then uh, we're ready to throw the chain back on. We can go back to the field. So I'm excited, I'm ready to pick some corn again. So it really wasn't a bad job all in all, just took a little time to do, that's all. Not something I could have finished last night, I was just too tired. So uh, we did work kind of late after the video last night to get to the point that we're at today, right now. So uh, we could get some corn picked this afternoon. So uh, it's coming together. We'll be done in probably about an hour. Some welding to do and some stuff to clean up and then we're ready to go. What'd you say? 
Clean up, yeah. We're gonna start singing the Barney song. Clean up, clean up, everybody clean up. What? Watch your patent rights. My pet, oh, patent rights. Yeah, no, copyright infringement. That's what it's called. Well, shit. Um, I would sing the song that never ends, but that's Lamb Chop. I'm gonna get in trouble for that, too. It's, it's a song that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. We had Tallish. Primitive Pete. I'm trying to make a video. Um, we need a taller shop. I mean, there's the ceiling. There's the top of the hopper. Ain't much room for me to shove in there between there. Oh, I almost forgot my hat in here. Okay, well, we're going to get finished up and head back to the field. Well, there we go. It's all back in. Um, we're going to do some welding now, weld this up. This bearing... Must be a little different than the bearing that I had before because the other bearing was flush out here. But this one's plenty far on. The collar's locked. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. So, uh, and all it does is steady the end of that anyways. This one is the one that's really the major one. But this bearing was good when we had it all tore apart. So we just left that one alone. It was perfectly fine. And uh, we got this sprocket tightened back up on the shaft. What actually happened was the Woodruff key inside that sprocket actually wore all the way through the shaft and it got loose and we couldn't get it off the shaft. So we just drilled a half inch hole in there, tightened it up, welded it up, and it'll be fine. It's a 40 year old combine, it'll be fine. So uh, I'm gonna grab the welder now, weld all this up, put the chain back on it and we can go to the field. Okay, so we're going to start welding up there. I got my ESOB Rebel here at the shop, my uh, 215. Um, we had it because we fixed the cutter bar on my 1020 head out in the field. So uh, it was sitting here in the shop. I thought, well, perfect. I can set it up there on the drive tire because the leads on that one won't reach up there comfortably without picking it up with the Bobcat. So I thought, well, we'll just throw this one up on the tire, leave the tank set on the floor, and uh, I can weld that up because my leads are plenty long. So it worked out great. The thing is only like 45 pounds with a roll of wire in it, so it's not real heavy. So it's a great welder to have around the shop. I use it at my own home shop. The thing welds with eighth inch 7018 on 110. It melt, just beautifully melts it. So really, really, the technology is really good in that welder for running on 110. So I highly recommend these welders if anybody's looking for one. So anyways, I'm gonna get up there and get this welding done so we can get back to the field. Well, it's all put back together. We're ready to head back to the field. So I'm gonna open the doors, get it out of the shop, get on the road. Well, got her fixed, so we're back to picking some corn. I'm happy with it. So, uh, dad strength came with me. So, uh, 
check out the corn pile. It's growing today. They're uh, putting corn up there. There'd be a million bushels in that pile when they're done. So it's kind of cool to watch it grow. So we're gonna untarp real quick, get on the scale. There's no line today, which is nice. So I can drive right in, dump, and we can get out of here. So there's a pretty Pete. I think that's Cousin Matt's Pete. Yep, that is. So better not say pretty too much and make his head swell. So anyways, we get my tarp opened up and get on the scale. Well, we're back from the elevator. Like Dad's strength said, let's go make corn happen. So uh, we're gonna go uh, make some corn happen, I guess. I guess that's a good way of looking at it, make corn happen. So, okay, let's get at it. So we're heading over to the next field. If anybody knows uh, Brown Lake, Indiana, if you've ever seen it on a map or anything, uh, that right there is Round Lake. It is all low muck and peat moss, and there's a lake out there, and it's bottomless. Uh, you definitely don't want to go walking around out there. So, uh, that's a swamp. So anyways, we're going to get to the move to the next field here, get it broke in, and uh, see how much of it we can get picked this evening. So, uh, everything's going great. I couldn't be happier. Well, we're getting this field all broke in. My Uncle Doug's here running R1660. Dad uh, took a load into the elevator. So we're gonna get this farm all broke in. Uh, got the ends down there. There's a wet spot down there in the corner that uh, Uncle Doug kinda got stuck in. But we backed the grain cart down in and uh, was able to uh, get him unloaded and the 1660 drove right out. So it wasn't uh, that exciting to actually video it. So hopefully sometime we uh, swamp one pretty good so we get some good video with the blue ropes getting one out. So I'm gonna go on the other side of the house on this property and uh, finish breaking the field in up around the house. And uh, then we'll get into some long rows and we'll get back to picking corn. Picking a lot of corn. So. Well, there's one thing that's definitely nice around here is we get fed very well. Mom just brought me something to eat. So I figured I'd go unload real slow, eat real quick, and then get back at it. Another thing I might add is the nice thing about Gleaner Combine is the seat works perfect as a party table. And this thing is perfect. These fit right here real nice, right in front of you, plenty high. You can sit here and eat like you're at the kitchen table or at the bar. I love it. This is some beautiful corn. It's as tall as the cab of the Combine got beautiful ears on it too. And these are just the ends. Well, here we are, the last six rows of the day. Gotta finish picking these and head up to the trucks. Call her a night. So it's been a good day. The cleaner's fixed. Ready to go again for tomorrow. Nothing's wrong with it. Everything's perfect. So it's been a real good day. We uh, we shelled quite a bit of corn today. Uh, so I suppose you could call it success. So I'm going to go home and get some to eat. Play with the dogs for a little bit, and then uh, go get some sleep. Hey, what's that? Oh, a rabbit. Oh, poor rabbit. Almost got him. So anyways, if you like this episode of Dirt Green Steel, give me a like and a subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Probably tomorrow sometime. Seems like I've been doing at least, at least, 
one to two videos a day. I'm pretty good at pumping videos out. I hope nobody's getting bored with the videos. Uh, if you are, uh, go ahead and tell me. I don't, I don't mind the criticism. So, uh, if anybody's got any ideas for uh, some other videos or something, let me know. I'm always open for suggestions. So, uh, anyways, everybody have a good night, and I will uh, see you next time. Oh.